Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. and I found that there are two kinds of people. First, we have the people that believe that there are two kinds of people. And second, we have the people that don't really believe that there are two kinds of people. And the same goes for typology. In the typology community today, we can talk about three approaches to typology. The first is the traditional approach, and that is the most common one. People are eager to find out who they are, and they are eager to try to describe themselves and to find people that share similar traits. Descriptive classic typology serves one purpose, and that is to identify and create stereotypes that are easy to recognize and that help you find out who you are. So people will describe themselves based on how outgoing they are, how loud or social they are, or how reserved or shy they are. And that becomes typology, how you are, what you do, how you act. Now, I've been contrasting and building an alternative kind of typology, and that is the flow typology. So the flow code typology is based on something simple, and that is that personality is related to health. Everyone has unique interests. Instead of trying to describe and say that, oh, these people, they're outgoing or loud or bubbly, and these people, they are shy and stiff and a bit reserved, I started talking about how people can be in a state of flow. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to offer quick and easy health advice and feedback to help people find out how they can get more energy, more motivation and more confidence. What I've seen is that if a person is confident, they'll probably be more outgoing and they'll be less shy. And if a person has more motivation and more energy, they'll probably be more outgoing too. And that means what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help people find how to get that energy, how to get that flow. Now, I said there was a third type of typology, and I'll talk about that in a second, but before then, I want to talk about what the flow code represents, and that is a shift against the traditional approach. Instead of trying to put people in 16 neat boxes, I'm trying to describe and show a kind of typology in which anyone can be or do anything. What that means is you can act in any way or you can demonstrate any cognitive function. Just because I'm going through things in a synchronistic or strategic manner at the moment does not mean that I'm using extroverted thinking, or just because I'm talking about my emotions or how I feel at a certain situation does not mean that I'm demonstrating introverted feeling. And in fact, by just studying what a person says or what words they use, you cannot type a person. People are quick to jump to whether you use the word think for a thinking type or feel for a feeling type, but often the semantics around it can vary and what the person means with that can actually be the very opposite of what it sounds like. And so a person might say that they are feeling in a certain way, but actually what they mean is they are thinking a certain way. Or a person might say that they are thinking a certain way and what they might mean is that they are feeling a certain way. And so of course, people will probably use both of these words. So what does it mean? It's easy to want to have a kind of typology where everyone will neatly and easily kind of obey and behave in accordance with their personality type. And certainly lots of people try. A lot of people will go out of their way to act and to be an exact replica of their personality type. And usually that works until like you hit about age 20, you know. And what I found is that the 16 personalities typology model is perfect for people that are kind of in the age of 15 to 20 because that's when you're finding your identity that's when stereotypes are real that's when everyone is just what they say they are and after that people start going beyond their cognition developing new personality traits exploring the deeper and darker sides of their personality and figuring out things that they didn't know before the third kind of typology is the new kind of typology that i'm hypothesizing is possible And so I want to challenge one of the paradigms that we have most taken for granted in the typology community, and that is that you cannot change your type. People have constantly been arguing that type cannot be changed. Type is fixed or static. And so you don't change your type, but what happens is you find out the type you really were. So we change our types, or do we? Do we change our types? That's the question that I'm hypothesizing is possible. And so I work with two alternative models, the flow code model and the fluid flow code model. At this time of its place, I'm not set on either one and I'm simply gathering research, testing things out and seeing what seems to be more accurate, what seems to be more beneficial. 
The reason why I was creating the fluid flow code was because I'm seeing that cognitive development is more than possible. I spent the last few years studying just that topic, development, and I've been observing and seeing that people are more than capable of change. Now what I'm wondering is, to what extent are we capable of change? Are we capable of completely changing our personality, our values, or are these things static or fixed? I've always assumed that personality was static. I've always assumed it was fixed. That's what everyone else told me it was. But I know today that in the Big Five and Ocean Model and other wor words of classic or traditional or modern psychology, it's pretty known that people change. It is shown and demonstrated that it's possible for people to develop themselves beyond what we thought was possible. So at the moment, I'm studying both of these models and I'm kind of testing out and seeing which one works better. Either people fall into a certain flow code and have a certain set of values and interests that they will always have, and by pursuing those values and interests, they fall into a state of flow, or we all share the same values and interests, but we have developed preferences, values, and ways of being that make us seem to be different. However, as we grow and develop ourselves, we start to connect with and build a deeper set of values that are more complicated and we become more rounded people. So, one of these things is true. Which one do you think is the correct one? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below, or if you want to help me with my research and work, feel free to visit patreon.com slash where I share journals and experiences and insights and to my studies. Thank you so much for being a part of it, and I hope to see you all in the next video.